This is a rendering of a human sacrifice being conducted by a 15th century Aztec priest. And if you're wondering whether the heart was still beating when they yanked it out of the victim's chest, the answer is yes. I wouldn't want to be the victim of a priest who was just learning how to do this, because I'm sure it took an awful long time for that person to die. But once the priest got pretty good, I imagine they probably went in and got the heart out in 30 seconds. Aztec culture involved human sacrifice. Evidence indicates the Aztecs may have been murdering as many as 20,000 victims a year. I think the Aztecs had a terrific understanding of human anatomy. When they decided to sacrifice their victims, they knew it was going to be a lot easier to get into the chest cavity by making a hole in the abdominal wall and getting at the heart, then trying to get through the breastplate, the sternum, and the ribs, which were very difficult to saw through. The victims were held down by four people, and the priest would take a knife, while the victim was still alive, plunge it right into the abdomen, rip open the abdomen with the knife, and made a hole big enough to get their arm in, put their arm in, pierce through the diaphragm, pushing their hand up into the chest. And the heart is the only thing in the chest that's going to be going like this, you know, and beating. It feels different than the surrounding tissue. The average adult human's heart is around the size of a small grapefruit and pretty much weighs around the same and has that kind of feel in your hand. So the priest would reach around until he felt the beating heart, grab onto it, and then just pull for all he was worth until he yanked it off its attachments. I have no doubt that the victim felt the priest's hand in his abdomen and the hand ripping through the diaphragm, which was, I am sure, exquisitely painful. And I have no doubt that the victim felt his heart being ripped from its attachments. But at that time, the victim would lose consciousness. tribe of wandering nomads engineer the America's greatest empire in just 200 years. They had to devise engineering systems which were extraordinary for their age. Their civilization rivaled Rome in its sophistication. The Aztecs had the best technology that could be produced in the conditions of which they lived. Aqueducts, palaces, pyramids, and temples stood as a tribute to their gods and a testament to the power of humankind. Coyotl's own bath was one of the most unique in the Americas. It was fed by a sophisticated aqueduct system that also brought running water to his palace grounds. Behind me is the hill of Tezcatlipoca, And on this hill, Nezahualcoyotl built a fantastic pleasure palace. And around this palace, a virtual botanical garden filled with all of the exotic flowers of Mesoamerica. Nezahualcoyotl brought water from the Sierra Nevada mountains all the way down to here into the hill to his palace just to water his plants. To install an aqueduct there, Nezahualcoyotl had to fill a huge gorge between Tetcocinco and the next hill. 
As the water arrived at the first hill, it gathered in small pools built to control the speed of the flow before it reached the aqueduct. After crossing the aqueduct, the water ran in a circuit around Tetsuko Cinco Hill, spilling off over the sides in rock-cut waterfalls to water the gardens. It ended up in a nearly perfectly round rock-cut pool called the King's Bath. And from here, you could look upon his domain at Texcoco, and he could look down at the botanical gardens that he was watering with his fantastic aqueduct. It is indeed a bath fit for a king. food supply for civilians is a no-brainer in the critical development of any civilization. But the Aztecs perfected a unique method, not only to provide a substantial food supply for its civilian populace, but to fuel the military expansion of its empire. This revolutionary engineering was called Chinampas, a system that allowed them to literally create new land to farm and to live on. If you're going to have a city of any size, you have to provide room for them. And so what they did was build up these chinampas in the lake bed. Basically, a chinampa is an artificial island built in the lake. They look like narrow football fields, about 300 feet long by about 30 feet wide. A chinampa was built by weaving a web of sticks floating in the water and piling reeds on top of them. Mud was then scraped from the lake bottom and piled atop the reeds to form the chinampa. It took four to six men eight days to build the average chinampa. They were connected to the city by massive navigational canals that would take thousands of men months to build. A chinampa like this one could produce up to seven crops a year, whereas a farm on the mainland could yield one, maybe two, maybe three at the most.